Welcome back to Cross-Cultural Communication and Management. This is Topic 3 of the Introduction Lecture on the Nature of Culture. There are three topics in this lecture. In the last two topics, we have learned that culture is our survival strategy. In Topic 1, we learned that adapting to a new culture and changing a culture if needed can define your success. In Topic 2, we learned that cultural diversity is influenced by at least four different drivers. Environment, genes, brain, and behavior. With Topic 3, we will look at this dynamic of culture more closely and understand the characteristics of cultural changes. To understand the dynamic change of culture, first of all, we need to identify its main components. Imagine a tree with three layers the trunk, the branches, and the canopy. The trunk represents fundamental concerns. These are the building blocks of culture, such as religion, language, music, and art. It also includes traits such as respect, love, hierarchy, loyalty, conformity, and risk-taking. At the baseline level, these are the cultural elements that can jump from one head to another, that can be learned, and passed down generations. They provide us an immense resource to survive, so that we don't have to rely on our genes. And for those reasons, they are called fundamental concerns. All human societies are concerned about them, for without them, we can't form a culture. And without a culture, we can't function and advance. Let's imagine two tribes going to war with each other. The winning tribe would be more likely the one who has the advanced versions of these building blocks. They have songs and poems that motivate them to fight a system that gives them reward, and a religion that gives them hope, that gods are on their side. The bottom line is, these fundamental concerns exist, because they are evolutionarily useful. The second layer of culture is value. For example, religion is a fundamental concern, a bidding block. But, above the baseline level, each society, and individual, may value it differently. So value is the degree of importance, that we put on those fundamental concerns. Value can range from high to low. The top layer of culture is outward expression. To continue with our example of religion, it is important, at baseline level, in all societies. But value means asking this question, how important? Because religion can, can be valued highly or moderately in different contexts. At the outward expression level of the canopy, Religion can be expressed with specific rituals, books, and traditions. So, outward expression are specific objects, symbols, and behaviors. They are the external expressions, the fundamental concerns, and values. Things that we can see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. Now that we have identified the main components of a culture, let's talk about how dynamic these components can be. I hope you remember this slide from the previous topic. It is about the direct way behaviors can influence culture, and two schools of thought, the static and dynamic paradigm. The static paradigm posits that culture shapes the behaviors, and it is a one-way street. We are the product of the culture. If you were born into the American culture, for example, you will be likely to think, and act in American way. The dynamic paradigm makes it a two-way street. Culture shapes behaviors, but behaviors can change culture as well. We are both the product and the producer of culture. Let's start with the static paradigm. A leader of this school of thought is Hofstede. He was famous for an index, putting a number in each country, and arrange their national values on a ranking. This way we can compare them statistically. Here you see that in terms of individualistic, IDV, the Dutch scored high, the Spanish in the middle, and the Taiwanese scored the lowest. This score came from a questionnaire that at the end of the 60s, Hofstede gave to IBM employees who came from diverse cultural backgrounds. 
For the static paradigm, cultural values, that is the branches of the tree, are hard to change. This makes the rank main reliable and useful. In any case, if cultural values do change, then this happens very slowly. And all countries in the world would change more or less in the same speed. This means the gap between them stay the same. And this also means the ranking remains reliable and useful, regardless of time. While the values can't change, the static paradigm does acknowledge change at the surface, or outward expressions. So if you look here, it's the canopy of the tree. This way, changes are superficial, and hence, values stay the same through history. The ranking is still reliable and useful. The main benefit of this approach is that, since values are fixed, and they shape behaviors, if we know the values of a culture, we can predict how people in that culture behave. For example, if we know that Taiwan is low on individualistic, then a good marketing strategy is to focus on group values, such as family and friendship. Let's compare the static paradigm with the dynamic paradigm. First of all, the static paradigm only analyzes a country, each country with some fixed values. For the dynamic paradigm, a country can have many cultures. And in each culture, opposing values or contrasting values coexist with each other. Second of all, cultural values don't change slowly. A culture can change fast or slow. It can even change back to the conservative side in the past. We can look at the revolution in Iran for a good example. Next, the world is not changing with the same speed, but each community responds dynamically and differently to its internal and external events. Then change does not happen at the surface only, but it happens at all levels of the tree metaphor of culture. And finally, culture and behaviors interact in a two-way street. Cultural values shape the behaviors, but repeated collective behaviors can change a culture as well. We have mentioned at least two examples, how young people are changing a culture towards sustainability, and the one-child policy in China. Both collective behaviors are changing even deep-rooted values in a culture. This is a picture I took when I lived in the Middle East. That day on the Tunis beach, was an interesting experience for me, when I saw a contrast of behaviors, and lifestyles. Here you see women in hijab and bikini enjoying their time at the beach. It is a great example of how a country can host many different cultures, and each culture can host opposing, or contrasting values and outward expressions. With that diversity in mind, we can now look at the inverted pyramid model. First, let's focus on the middle level, the collective level. Imagine there are at least four trees of cultures here. If you want to analyze a country for a new market, then there are at least four units of analysis to consider. There are global citizens with their own culture of specific values and outward expressions. Then of course is there is a national culture. Each country may have a national culture with some common values and outward expressions. Next, each organization can have its organizational culture, even with the opposite values compared to the country where it is located. We also have group cultures in terms of age, religion, hobby, sexual orientation, and profession. All these collective cultures can coexist within one country. 
so a fixed ranking for the whole country may not cover this diversity within it. If we move up one layer in the inverted pyramid model, we will see individual. Imagine there are approximately 8 billion trees on this layer, and each of us is unique. None is a typical, or a representative of her, or his cultures. Also, a person can belong to many different collective cultures, with multiple identities. I can take myself as an example. For a long time already, I don't consider home a physical place anymore. In fact, there are three countries in which, when I meet up with a custom officer, that person will look at my passport and say, Welcome home. Those with multiple identities are also more capable of holding opposing values and switch between them according to different contexts. Remember the brain plasticity that allows us to do so? Besides, this person can conform or contradict the stereotypes of her or his culture. We just never know. She or he can also change a culture, even when this person is an outsider to the culture. What I really want to emphasize here is that, most of the time, you do not do business with a country. You do it with a unique person. An averaged ranking is a good guess, but it doesn't help much when you communicate with a specific colleague or a customer. And with that approach, I created this motto for international business. Think global. Plan local. But act individual. Let's conclude this topic with three main points. First, culture is like a tree. There are three major components. The trunk represents fundamental concerns, the building blocks of culture that are important in all societies. The branches represent values, degree of importance each society, individual, or context places on these concerns. The canopy represents outward expressions, the specific objects, symbols, and behaviors of those concerns and values. Second, there are two major school of thoughts. The static paradigm assumes culture is stable. Change only occurs at the outward expression. If values change, the change is slow, and the world changes at the same speed. The dynamic paradigm proposes that culture is changing dynamically, at all levels, with different speeds. Opposing values can coexist in a culture, and even within a person. Third, Putting this tree of culture on the inverted pyramid model, then we have the universal level, where we all share as human being. The collective level is where we see dynamic paradigm plays out, with four different levels of analysis, global, national, organizational, and group cultures. So a country is not a culture. A country can host many cultures, and a culture can host opposing or contrasting values. For international business, it's crucial to remember that we may plan a business locally, but we often do business individually, with a unique person. A person is not her or his culture. A person can have multicultural mind with opposing values, can follow or change a culture, even as an outsider. In any case, context is the most reliable resource to understand cultural change. Contexts vary immensely. We need to invest time and effort for it.